I shift focus over to Turkey. The Turkish presidential poll storm continues to simmer. The campaign leading up to Turkey's election this weekend has been marred by outbreaks of violence across the entire nation. Incidents of stone pelting, physical attacks on election workers and gunmen shooting up party offices have all been recorded in recent weeks as Turkey heads towards a knife-edge polls in which President Recep Tayyip Erdogan is seeking to extend his 20-year rule. Meanwhile, millions of first-time voters make up a major chunk of this electorate and many in Turkey see them as the largest group of undecided voters to win outrightly on Sunday, which is when the polls are taking place. A candidate will have to secure more than half the vote. However, the withdrawal by Muharrem Inche, one of the four contesting Sunday's presidential vote could reshape the electoral picture in what is seen as Erdogan's biggest test in his two-decade reign. Here's a report. Turkish security sources say that 110 people have been arrested there for alleged ties to Kurdish militants, now less than three weeks before its presidential election. The operation was focused on Diyarbakir, the largest city in mainly Kurdish southeast Turkey, and targeted people across 21 provinces accused of links to the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party militant group, also known as the PKK. But a pro-Kurdish lawmaker says top members of his party, journalists, artists and lawyers, were among those detained. People's Democratic Party lawmaker Tayyip Temel said on Twitter, quote, on the eve of the election, out of fear of losing power, they have resorted to detention operations again. The prosecutor's office in Diyarbakir declined to comment. Soaring inflation and public criticism over how the government handled the earthquake that killed at least 48,000 people has left Erdogan and his party facing the toughest electoral challenge since he first rose to power in 2002. One security source said the suspects were accused of providing financing, recruiting and spreading propaganda for the PKK, which is designated as a terrorist group by Turkey and several Western states. Kurds, who have long felt sidelined in Turkish politics, could have a decisive role in May elections. With polls showing support finely balanced between Erdogan's ruling alliance and the opposition, the pro-Kurdish People's Democratic Party, or HDP, is a potential kingmaker. The party faces a potential ban, however, in a constitutional court case in which it is accused of PKK connections that it denies. Its parliamentary candidates are now running under the umbrella of the small Green Left Party. The HDP is not part of the main opposition alliance, but is fiercely opposed to Erdogan. It has faced a crackdown in recent years, with thousands of its members, lawmakers and mayors, jailed or stripped of their positions over alleged PKK ties. More than 40,000 people have been killed in the insurgency launched by the PKK in 1984. In recent years, the fighting has shifted from southeast Turkey and is now focused in northern Iraq. All right, uh, so for more perspective, I'm joined in by Turkish foreign policy expert Sunan Ulgen, who's joining us live. He's a senior fellow at the Carnegie Europe in Brussels. Many thanks to you, Sunan, for joining in. Uh, let's begin by talking about why this election is, in fact, being touted as Erdogan's toughest election so far. Uh, yes, uh, this is uh, going to be a, an uphill battle for Erdogan. Um, for the past 20 years, uh, he has ruled the Turkish political landscape and he has won uh, every election. But this time around, uh, it looks uh, different. Uh, for the first time, and in an unprecedented way, that is to say, uh, Erdogan is not uh, in the lead uh, in the polls. Uh, the opposition candidate, Kılıçdaroğlu, has a, a small lead uh, and uh, he has maintained that lead. Uh, over the past uh, few weeks. Uh, and now uh, we are uh, heading to elections on Sunday where it is more likely that the opposition candidate uh, will uh, again uh, come uh, as the uh, lead uh, person. Uh, and there is also a likelihood that he could also clear the 50% threshold uh, so that uh, there won't be a, a second round. But if, if no candidate can clear that 50%, then there will be a, uh, a second round in two weeks' time between Erdogan and Kılıçdaroğlu, the candidate of the opposition. Right. 
And it's interesting that you mentioned that uh, contest between Erdogan and Kilic Darulu, which are both very stark choices for presidency. How different are the paths that the two have to offer to Turkey? We are talking about uh, two very different visions uh, for the future of Turkish society, uh, but also uh, the future of Turkey as an international actor. Uh, the Erdogan vision, uh, which is uh, something that he has also uh, had the opportunity uh, to, uh, to implement over the past 20 years, um, has essentially uh, been uh, to build um, a, a, a democracy where a lot of power is invested in one person, namely the president. Uh, so he has uh, essentially eliminated the checks and balances, uh, which is a core requirement. Uh, for a, uh, any well-grounded uh, democracy. Um, and whereas the Kılıçdaroğlu vision uh, is one where uh, the uh, constitutional changes that he offers uh, will be towards uh, the rebuilding of Turkish democracy uh, by firstly changing the current hyper-presidential system to a parliamentary system, uh, by uh, implementing stronger checks and balances uh, and the separation of powers, uh, and also overhauling uh, Turkey's uh, democratic standards, uh, improving the rule of law. Uh, so this, in that sense, uh, the differences are pretty clear. And on foreign policy as well, there are very clear differences. Uh, we've seen uh, Erdogan uh, essentially trying to augment uh, Turkey's strategic autonomy, almost positioning it uh, as a country between the West and the non-West. Uh, whereas the opposition uh, viewpoint, perspective on foreign policy, is that Turkey is a member of the Western community of nations. So it should essentially seek to improve primarily right. its relations with the West. All right. Sinan, can Turkey's earthquake victims now decide the fate of this election, given that getting home to vote will be a challenge for millions of those Turks who are already displaced? Uh, there has been a very tragic earthquake uh, in Turkey a couple of weeks ago, um, and it has really been uh, the largest disaster uh, experience uh, in Turkey since uh, the Republic uh, was set up in 1923. Uh, however, interestingly, the political impact uh, of that very large-scale disaster uh, has not been as major as uh, many uh, would tend to think. Uh, because ultimately the region uh, where uh, this earthquake happened, uh, the regions that were affected by this calamity, uh, essentially uh, did uh, back the government narrative that uh, this was such a large uh, natural disaster uh, that uh, it would have been impossible for any government uh, to mitigate the consequences. Uh, however, uh, from the standpoint of the popular vote, uh, certainly there are going to be uh, more than a million uh, people who will not be able to vote, who've had to uh, go to and travel uh, to other uh, corners of the country and will not get the vote uh, in their home constituencies. And this is probably going to handicap the overall vote for AK Party and Erdogan because these are the re regions, uh, with the exception of uh, Hatay Antakya, uh, these are the regions where uh, our party falls above the national average. I'm sure uh, inflation is also playing a huge, massive role uh, in uh, deciding the fate of this election. On that note, many thanks to you, Sinan Ulgin.